The Thought Buffet opens its doors and welcomes its guests, offering them tasty morsels for the mind, a buffet of truth, a buffet of thought, a buffet of the tough, tough issues that constantly seem to swirl the society that surrounds us. Now, before we have talked about such issues such as religion and suicide and, you know, things of that variety, but today we're going to talk about something that's been a core issue, uh, something that has actually been on the mouths of a lot of people uh, for decades now. We're going to talk about the abortion issue on today's Thought Buffet. And the reason why I want to actually bring this up, the reason why the Thought Buffet would even consider this a course in their uh, meal selection is because it is something that even multiple decades later, nearly four decades later, I believe, is still a constant. It's still something that is uh, defended or argued to the death by those members of religious organizations or just those members of society that have an opinion on the matter. And of course, I have an opinion also on this. Uh, however, it's something where I feel that sometimes it is an issue that is oversimplified. It's an issue that is, you know, made out to be a very, very complex and damning idea whenever in reality this is something that really should have always been a last-ditch effort sort of idea. Now, I posed this example earlier uh, whenever I was on Facebook talking with a couple of people about this, and I'm going to uh, pose this again. Let's consider two people. Let's consider Joe and Linda. Uh, Joe and Linda have been in a relationship now for about three years. Uh, they are very deeply in love. There have been, you know, minor bumps throughout the road, but there has never been any question to their devotion to one another. And they, of course, have engaged in sexual intercourse. They may or may not be married. That's really not the issue right here. Uh, because the real thing here is that Joe and Linda happen to also be on the poorer end of the uh, financial spectrum. They are not very well to do. In fact, they're struggling just to get by. And they are hard workers, you know, in spite of all this. They are people that uh, perhaps did not have the best of education, either that or didn't have uh, the opportunities that have perhaps have been granted to so many of us uh, when we, of course, take advantage and are, uh, you know, we really don't see them as advantages. We see them more as burdens, which is a problem in itself. So, posed with this scenario, let's uh, say that Joe and Linda end up getting pregnant. Uh, Linda is pregnant, obviously. Joe is the father of the child. And they do not have the financial ability, perhaps, to support this child. This is something where they're barely scraping by with the two of them. And even with the aid of the uh, governmental programs and other different ideas that are out there to aid uh, individuals, they would still be very, very close to scraping by, if not still in debt. Now, I'm not saying that this is something where Joe and Linda are immediately going to turn to abortion as a reason in order to end it all. In fact, these are two individuals that really they, they would love to bring this child into the world and give them a nice loving home and a powerful experience as a human being. They just may not be able to give this child everything that they want. And in reality, that may be a that might be something that might be an idea that actually would cause them to lose some sleep at night and really not feel very good about themselves as parents. Feel almost as though they were unjust or unqualified to uh, have the term of parent. Now that we have this situation, let's consider a second one. Let's consider Karen. Uh, Karen, in the past year, has had 30 different sexual partners. Whether they be male or female is really up in the air, but there's definitely had to be a larger majority of male than female. Karen has also had two abortions prior to this, and she is pregnant once again, and she's already getting the money together in order to take care of baby number three. Now, in these two situations, we see two people that are faced with the abortion issue with two very, very different philosophies, and there's a thousand and one other different philosophies and different situations that can occur, some of which may involve uh, a rape, some may involve a, an accidental, you know, idea, some may involve, you know, a very, very rough Jerry Springer-like scenario where maybe cheating occurred or something like that, and there wants to be prevention of them even knowing that it happened, whatever it may be. Whatever the situations are, these two are just two in... Uh, a number of different situations that are each individual for the couples of which they are taking part uh, in the activity. 
Uh, the one thing I will say is that individual number two, Karen, is definitely looking at this as almost like a get-out-of-jail-free card. She's looking at abortion as a way to uh, kind of dispose of the problem, the problem, not the child, the problem, uh, very, very cheaply and, you know, kind of take care of that. That way she can re, uh, you know, restart her lifestyle and continue onward. With Joe and Linda, it's a little bit different. This is an option that is a last-ditch scenario effort, something where they really don't want to think about doing that. They don't want to think about aborting their child. However, it is something that has crossed their minds because adoption and foster care can sometimes be a little bit hairy. They may have heard a lot of uh, very negative stories or negative press regarding this scenario, and the adoption process can sometimes be very tricky because there are legal fees and legal counsel that are involved, and that's just money that they don't have. Financially, the only options that sometimes they think about are giving birth to this child and doing the best that they can, or abortion, completely and totally forgoing some of the other great options that are available. Now I'm going to let you guys know a little bit about myself. I am adopted myself. I was uh, adopted back in 1984 at three days old uh, by my parents, and it's been a tremendous experience. Uh, do I have any desire to meet my, my true parents, my birth parents? I don't, and I think that the main reason behind that is because I was adopted at three days old as opposed to a couple of years or something along those lines. The only real information I want about them is my true lineage as far as uh, nationality is concerned and also any sort of health concerns or risks that I may uh, really be prone to, something that I should have to watch out for later in life that may be handed down. Uh, through the gene pool that was swapped uh, whenever the intercourse occurred and my uh, my genesis really was uh, was uh, you know occurred but they decided to do the adoption route for whatever reason it was for them and it was something that really worked out for me now I understand that's not true of everybody I understand that there is no universal truth uh, whenever it comes to any of these options uh, of course there are people that may adopt and have adopter uh, adopters regret uh, is definitely a real thing where they come and look for the uh, their child and hope to bring him back almost like trying to restart their own life uh, with their child in it after a couple of years or whatever it may be uh, foster care of course can really be a problem considering the environment and of course uh, there are many people I'm sure that have had abortions that have laid awake at night thinking to themselves you know, maybe I just aborted a doctor or the next president of the United States, whatever it might be. You know, the next uh, real influential person of society. And sadly enough, I'm sure there are some people that have given birth that have thought, why didn't I do something else? And that's a very sad scenario, but it's out there. My personal thoughts and views on abortion are quite simple. I am, uh, I'm pro-choice. I believe that it's a choice that everybody should be entitled to. Uh, it is one thing, however, that should be uh, an entitlement that is used both responsibly and really as a last-ditch effort, something where there is no other option uh, really available to you and there is just no way in hell that you can navigate some sort of system or uh, get some arrangements put together where you can keep this child. I understand that overpopulation is something that people already talk about. I understand that... Uh, with teen pregnancy really being at hugely high rates, it, it's just, it, it just seems like another mouth to feed or another individual that may not ever have a chance and really just downgrade society as far as a, you know, purely, purely philosophical, you know, means of questioning is concerned, but you never know that. You know, if you are in this situation and you do not want to, you know, give birth and keep the baby, of course, I believe that the best option for you is to consider the adoption system. It is something that can be relatively complex. It is one that could have many odds and ends, and there might be a bit of a financial burden to it, to either that or there might be an element that does involve some finance. It will definitely uh, require an attorney, all depending on how you go through it. Uh, this is one that, however will really give the child, hopefully, the best environment to grow up in because these are parents that are seeking children. They are hoping uh, more than ever before uh, to raise a child and give the child every opportunity uh, that perhaps they have been unable to give to a child up until this point. Uh, one of the principal reasons why my parents turned to adoption was because of a medical reason. and. 
there are plenty of other individuals, plenty of other uh, women or men out there that suffer from these conditions that still wish to have a, another member to their family and provide love and care for them. So the adoption system is certainly one that, while there might be horror stories out there, it's one that really does need to be considered a lot more often as opposed to immediately going for the suction process. Uh, secondly, I understand that foster care and foster homes are already kind of going through a rough spell considering there is a lot of kids being placed in there because of unfit living conditions, all of those different aspects of life uh, that may actually trouble a, a, a potential uh, potential parents before uh, during the pregnancy process, either that or something that gets out of control after the fact. Uh, the foster care system is not perfect. In fact, it's probably far from perfect. However, it is sometimes a better scenario uh, than just simply going for that suction process, so to speak. Adoption is something that really should be a last-ditch effort, something that is really the means of last resort, and really you should consider keeping it uh, probably prior to considering uh, abortion, only simply because uh, this is... There's that whole argument that this is a life that you're bringing into the world, and it is your choice 100%. Uh, however, if all processes have been exhausted, if all options have been exhausted, and this is something where you just cannot, you know, do it, where there perhaps might be risk to you medically, perhaps this was something that was a involvement in a rape, some sort of crime that may have happened to you that's been documented, that's been... You know, there, there has been a proceeding done in order to, you know, really take care of this. Um, there are various situations where the abortion option really seems to be the best idea. A and it's, once again, mainly on a philosophical level. A lot of people think that if a rapist is uh, successful in impregnating somebody, that that child could grow up to be a rapist. It's not necessarily a truth whatsoever. Uh, however, it is a commonplace philosophy that a lot of people... Uh, fearful for the next generation do tend to hold. Uh, adoption is certainly one that I push so vehemently since I had a positive experience. Now, of course, somebody who had a negative experience may have a different take. And finally, uh, abortion is one thing where this is 100% in the interest of... It should be in the interest of the, 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 the life or and really in the in the life that's inside of you that if it's one of those things where you feel that you can give them a satisfactory living experience and those options have been exhausted, then you're almost left with just one option. However, this is an option that I feel that needs to be available for this reason. I feel that it needs to be available considering uh, it how many children already grow up in poverty, and that is all that they know. And they have to turn to things such as crime, turn to things such as violence, really get mixed up in the wrong things just to survive. Uh, how many times do we hear about rags to riches stories that really are very, very nice and warm-hearted and really fill us with an element of hope, but how many times do we not hear the full story of the heartbreak and the rough times uh, that some of these kids perhaps have grown up? This is an option that I believe does need to be instilled primarily because of those that are victims of crime and those that have really no other option. And I know someone's going to come in and say, well, you just presented a lot of other options, but yes, some of those can be complex, and not everybody is going to function the same way as you or as I. This is something where it is in the individual's best interest to listen to themselves. And in the case of Joe and Linda... Perhaps they have plenty of other options that are a reality. Perhaps they're able to have a very, very small process for the adoption because there's a family that they know that perhaps is a little bit better off that would provide their son or daughter a lovely, fantastic life. The life that they might not be able to give to them. And they would also have the realistic ability to be a part of it. The case of Karen, though, she's operating primarily on selfishness. And this is something that also needs to be taken into consideration and something that should attempt to be avoided. This is not all about your life now and how this fetus that you have conceived with somebody else while being either a party girl or, if you're a guy, while being a obnoxious dick with some girl. This is not something that has just come along in order to stymie 
your process of becoming the biggest douche in the universe, or the biggest party girl in the universe, or whatever. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity that should be harder to throw away than what it seemed in the example of Karen that it was. Because it was something that she had thrown away multiple times, almost without thought. The Thought Buffet closes its doors, offering up a hearty course of thought, truth, human expression, a lot of different things today. Talking about an old topic, however a topic that when tasted and when sampled by the mind, it does soothe and more it does, is a soothing morsel, one that, while it is very complex and causes much struggle, is one that certainly makes us all think. Thank you.